if you like. Next is a soldier's belt. Or as we like to call it, a kingular. Very important piece of equipment. First of all, it's there to give just a little tiny bit of protection. As you can see, it would stop the odd sword blow. It also scares the Celts. They hear the noise, the jingle jangle noise. 5,000 soldiers marching with their belts, making this noise. And the Celts go, oh, the Romans are coming, run away. But of course, the main reason is to show off. These are his medals. He wants to show off to the girls. So on a night, when he's finished work, he takes off his helmet, his armour, weapons, obviously keeps on the tunic, but he puts the kingulum back on. So when he goes out to the Roman disco for a dance, all the girls, all the girls see the belt, know he's a Roman soldier, oh, brave Roman soldier, can I buy you a drink please? So as you can see, it's basically designed for showing off, back in line. Now for the armour, the most important part of the equipment. This type of armour we call chainmail. It was one of the earliest styles used by the Romans. In fact, many Romans later on liked this type of armour. It offered a lot of movement. You could do your exercises very well. Let's have an exercise. Very good. That's enough, thank you. Okay building up his part. The chainmail was very good at protection. It would stop you from being cut. It would also stop you from being stabbed. What it was not very good at, because many Celts did not have sharp weapons, they had big heavy sticks and they would run at the Romans very hard with their sticks and hit them very hard here breaking that bone the collarbone, the shoulder blade this would break very easily and of course the arm would be useless no good for fighting and the only way to take off this vest is to lift your arms up which of course if I do here or here was broken it would hurt a lot. You would have to wait until your friends cut open all the way up the chain mill. So that's why many Romans preferred what we call lorica segmentata. This is made from strips of metal held together inside by strips of leather, which makes it really really flexible. It's not as easy to move in as a chain mill, but it's still possible for the soldier to do his exercises. Get up. Now to test how strong this really is. Okay, you can move. It'll stop you from being stabbed. Stop you from being cut. But what about those heavy blows that the chain mill just wasn't quite good enough at? <sighs> One more. Oh, this job just gets better. Back seen the armour, now for the weapons. This is a javelin, or as we call it, a pilum. And each soldier would have two of these, and it was one of the most effective weapons the Romans had. This piece here, very soft, made from soft metal, and this 
tip here was very hard. When it was thrown, this would go through anything. But this here, once it impacted, hit whatever, the shield, a man, the ground, this would bend and break. So it made it impossible for the Celts or whoever to throw it back. If it went through the shield, as you can see, it would probably go through the man as well. But because this would bend, if it missed the man, he had to throw his shield away and fight without a shield. Can you imagine? 5,000 men in a legion. Two of these each. You're lined up and you're actually watching 10,000 pelums coming flying through the air. Scary stuff, eh? Next is the shield, or as we call it, the scutum. These, these were very large, they would protect you a lot. You would have a whole line of soldiers standing very close, the shields more or less interlocking with each other. Now whilst it was here for protection, it was also a really good a weapon, something you could actually use. This here is called a boss. It actually protects my hand at the back. But as I will show you now, anybody attacking, you can actually use the boss to punch them. Or hit them to the edge of the shield in the stomach. Or even in the face. Or down there on the legs. So it was a very effective weapon, as well as something you could use to defend yourself with. Now, the most famous or important part of your weaponry, of course, your sword, the gladius. This part here will be very sharp. This we weren't bothered about at the bottom because it was not used as a sword to fight like this. It was actually just used as a weapon to stab. This here, you just march forward, stabbing at the Celts. And there was actually three main places that you would aim for to kill. The first one, instant kill, straight through the throat. Dead. The second one, in the chest and up to the heart. Dead. The third one, you might just live a little bit. We're going to cut or sever one of the main arteries, which was just here. We're now going to show you exactly what it looked like to see a line of Roman soldiers marching towards you. You may have noticed that I actually have my gladius on this side, whilst the soldiers have theirs on this side. The reason for that is because I, as Centurion, would draw my gladius first and I would give the order for all the soldiers who are lined up very tight together to draw theirs at the same time. If they had them here, the shield would be in the way, and also they would elbow their friend in the face, it would fall to pieces. So the soldiers have theirs on their right hand side, and they draw them like this, and march forward. You're now going to see exactly what it would have looked like facing an army of Roman soldiers. Although we get lots of time to enjoy ourselves, there's nothing better after a hard day's killing than to go down to the local bathhouse to meet your friends, to get clean, just to enjoy yourselves and relax. The bathhouse is a big building with lots of different rooms, kept warm by underfloor heating that came from a fire. The first thing we do is we go into the changing room, we take our clothes off, we pay the slave to look after them, especially our underfloor.